listening to Autonomous Unity on the Solidarity with Autonomy Network, the Swan, and this is Episode 10, the Gino Interview. If you are not a member of Narcotics Anonymous or an addict seeking recovery, we respectfully request that you tune out at this time and find a different podcast to listen to. This is simply in keeping with the spirit of our traditions in so much as internal controversies and debates do not become public fodder. And welcome to Autonomous Unity. As you just heard not too long ago, this is episode 10, the Gino interview. This Gino interview is is basically comes out of the Texas History Conference that happened in uh, Fort Worth. The Fort Worth History Conference, it was put on by the, I, I believe it was called the Miracles Happen Home Group. I got a t-shirt somewhere, I could read it right off of there if I had it handy. Uh, but at any rate, this interview was so powerful, so important as far as a man who played a, a major role in a lot of our history, w- was uh, very instrumental in getting... Narcotics Anonymous established in the state of Texas at all, uh, and somebody who was always opposed to the baby blue until actually decided to read the baby blue with an open mind and switch sides completely. And he's going to tell you how that happened. It's not a very long interview, but it is something so powerful and so important that I felt like it needed to be its own podcast as we're going through and editing this uh, Texas History Day uh, conference podcast and and some of the interviews that were done there and and deciding what needs to go in that podcast. Uh, And and, uh, like I said, this this interview seems so important to me that it needs to be its very own standalone podcast. So all that being said, and with no further babbling from the host, here it is, uh, the Gino interview in Fort Worth, Texas, 2014. Okay, so this is, uh, I'm Chubb Ziatic, we're interviewing Gino, and are you currently from Texas, is that correct? Yeah, I live in Galveston, Texas. Okay, you were from Reno at one point, right? Yeah, I lived in Reno, Nevada, Lake Tahoe. Okay, I fell in Nevada, and I lived in Pahrump for a little while. Oh, okay. so, <laughs> anyway, we're, we're interviewing Gino, and I think we'll just kind of let him tell his story. We're here at the, uh, the uh, History Conference 2014 in Fort Worth, Texas, uh, put on by the Miracles Happen Home Group. Uh, and uh, dealing with a lot of baby blue history, the the court case uh, history, the basic text, not just the baby blue, but a lot of just general NA and Texas history today. Uh, and we're interviewing Gino, who uh, he was around back in the, the day of the original baby blue controversy. Uh, do I understand it right? Were you one of the founders uh, or founding members of, of the areas down here or the region here in Texas? Yeah, I don't call myself founder. I'm probably one of the founding members or... You know, with Texas and a Unity Convention uh, early on, uh, uh, Narcotic Anonymous, uh, I was program chair of the Eighth World Convention. And, and would I be out of line if I asked your clean date? October 23rd, 1974. Wow. wow. I first came in uh, July 17th, 1973. I came here from Reno, Nevada. I had to change my lifestyle. So now, back in the day of the original Baby Blue case, uh, when they were going to court, you were on the other side of the things. You kind of yeah, I didn't run, I didn't hear about it. I went to Muskegon, Michigan, uh, and spoke at their convention. I think it was 1988, and uh, I was down there in Muskegon, uh, uh, where uh, Elvis Presley supposedly uh, passed away at, and these guys that I knew. Uh, uh, from Michigan, they had these baby blues, and they were trying to, uh, to talk with me about it, and I wouldn't have anything to do with it, uh, you know. And uh, and where I was at, uh, you know, back then we just, you know, <clears throat> it's back in the early times, and when the Lone Star Region was born, uh, for me, my focus was on about unity in Texas, and you know, back in that day, uh, we were excited to just. Uh, have a basic text. So all we had was a little white book back then, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, you know, why do these motherfuckers want to fuck this thing <laughs> up? You know, uh, you know, we <laughs> we wanted our own book for a good many years, and now that we, you know, that uh, we got one, you know, uh, they're coming out with the baby blue shit, and, and my focus wasn't, uh, uh, you know wasn't there with that. My focus was on uh, having unity within our state. We had two regions at the time, Lone Star and Best Little Region, and uh, and uh, there was, you know, people there 
you know, uh, I want to start another region. And, you know, before it was all over, we had five or six regions in Texas, you know, and all that political stuff started coming in there. And uh, Lone Star separated from uh, Houston and uh, uh, Tri County, uh, or uh, not Tri uh, Texas Blue Planet region, uh, you know, started, you know, so uh, we just started getting away from some things. And uh, for years, I, for me, I fought about any baby blues coming into Texas. And uh, I went to uh, uh, I went to the World Convention last year in Philadelphia, and uh, I was riding down there in my little scooter, got my vest on. People know me. I've been at about 28, 29, 30 uh, World Conventions, and, mm -hmm. and uh, <clears throat> I'm riding down the sidewalk right outside the convention place, and this. This guy uh, sitting in a van hands me a baby blue. Was that Billy? Yeah, that was <laughs> Billy. And of course, I didn't know Billy. Uh, and I always wanted one to see what one, uh, uh, you know, really looked like or read. Uh, uh, but I would never have nothing to do with one. So you'd never actually read one before last no. year, never opened it up to confirm no. whether it indeed was our original literature or not. Right, I never read one or anything. I didn't want anything to cause more confusion. Uh, uh, I want this baby blue that I didn't know nothing about. Uh, and so uh, I'm riding by, and there's this guy in his van, he hands me this baby blue book. Uh, I looked at the book, I knew what it was right away. <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I seen one before in somebody's hand, and that ain't for us. But uh, I looked at him and looked at the book, and I didn't say a word to him. And so uh, he just put the book in my hand, and I just went on. <laughs> and uh, and so uh, I eventually opened the book, started reading through it, and didn't think much about it, you know. Uh, and uh, it's ex self-explanatory about uh, why they came out with the baby book. And I liked it. You know, there was no uh, personal stories and all in there. And so uh, Billy gave me a call. And, uh, and I realized today I never seen him in person. We talked on the phone. And uh, Vito told him to call me. And, and so uh, he sent me 50 books. And he said, uh, you, if you want them, hand them out to your group. So I give them the addicts. You can't sell them. Okay, that's cool. So uh, I took the 50 books and uh, I went some places and people see me with the books in my hand. I didn't even have to give anybody any. They came up and asked me for them. And uh, what's that, baby blue? I said, well, yeah. Can I have one? I said, well, yeah, you can have one and I'll sell. But this is what you got to do. If you want one, I'll give you one, but you need to go to your group and if they want uh, some uh, for the attic, and that's what it's for, for the attic, can't afford a book, you know, regular basic text. It's to get uh, them books out to the, to the attic. And so... Uh, get your group to order a hundred bucks. There'd be no shipping costs. And here's, here's this guy's phone number. So I took them 50 books and I put Bill Allen's phone number in all them books. <laughs> he won them. <laughs> Give uh, Bill a call. Well, that's uh, what they did. And of course, I took it to my group. And my group ordered a hundred of them. And, uh, and this treatment center was bringing her clients over to our place, uh, they wanted to name uh, where they can get them. So I gave them Bill Allen's phone number, and and uh, they ordered a hundred. So, you know, they got books to give to clients, and and we got books to give to addicts coming into our meeting. And, uh, and we had a study group on it, you know, uh, and, uh, and I ran out of them and ordered another hundred.
so uh, the group likes the idea and that there's something happening in Texas that other people, you know, uh, in Houston and other places uh, in Texas, they got one and they want them too. It's a controversial book. Sound like attraction rather than promotion. Well, yeah, it is. Enjoyed hearing you speak. Oh, thank you. Now, I just want to make sure I'm hearing you right. You didn't want anything to do with this for years. No, back and, in 88. But the moment you actually opened the book and read it, you started to have a change of heart. Well, I had a change of heart. You know, one of the things happened at World Convention, uh, I went, you know, I've been part of it. Narcotic Anonymous for 40 years and uh, 41 years right now and uh, uh, program chair of the 8th World Convention and program chair when we had a World Convention in San Antonio too and uh, and I don't like what's happening with the with the fellowship with NALS and World Conventions and you know, a guy that I love dearly, uh, you know, he got up at the World Convention and said he's the director. And we don't have directors. Oh, you the director of Narcotics Anonymous. Yeah. I remember and reading about that in the Philadelphia Inquirer or something. Told us we need to quiet down. He's the director here. Oh. Okay, so you're not talking about when they actually made the quotes to the Philadelphia no. Inquirer, but he actually, okay, I see. Yeah, and that left a bad taste in my mouth. Okay. And so, uh, you know, I'm going through have a challenge with COPD, you know, and have a hard time getting around, and that's probably my last uh, convention. Uh, one, my health, but the other part is what he said. Uh, you know, uh, I didn't like that statement. And uh, Jimmy said, we don't have no directors. No big shots in no N.A., he used to say, right? right. <laughs> you know, no gurus, no nothing. All we are is just addicts. But... Uh, uh, anyway, uh, I got that, you know, got that book and, and uh, just started passing them out. And what it seemed to be doing is generating a lot of excitement like way back in the day uh, mm -hmm. when we had that at World Convention in 1978. And some of the people I know, they wanted to take that convention back to California. And uh, I jumped up and said, this convention don't belong to you. It's time for it to move around the country. And it took another 10 years, 1978, uh, when we had that convention. And it took 10 years, 1988 was the first time I went back to California in, in arms. And, and I didn't know. I was talking. I'd heard that story about someone telling them that uh, this convention doesn't belong to you and it's time for it to move around. I didn't realize I was actually talking to the man right now. Yeah, right. You know, and... Uh, and uh, I got stone goofy with it, and, and uh, uh, there's a guy, uh, Chuck Skinner. I went to that convention. Oh shit! Here comes Houston. Uh, uh, they're the ones that you know <clears throat> speak that AANA stuff. And I, I went to California, and they got they got things all fucked up out there. They talk in a dual message, you know, and they were supposed to bring the message to Houston, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, anyway, that's the way things, uh, you know, were. And uh, and all I know is right now, uh, I like what uh, it's happening. It's generated uh, a new spirit. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> the book's going to change that. The baby blue people getting the basic text that uh, can't afford to get them. Especially the new people. You know, I had a similar experience to you, a little different, but I remember early in my recovery, my second sponsor was telling me about this great thing called the Baby Blue and this group of addicts, and he didn't have the facts straight, but this group of addicts that stood up to the World Service Office and they tried to sue him and, and, and the fellowship won. And then I, another man I greatly respected told me about this group of malcontents who tried to change our book and make a profit of it, and World Service Office sued them and won. And so I immediately went, well, I want to find out what's the truth. And I, I started doing some research, and I'm seeing different versions of this baby blue story online, but everybody I'm seeing that was involved with it is basically saying the same thing. And 
I'm looking going, one group of people is telling me to research all sides of it and don't be afraid of the history, and another group's telling me that this that this history is dangerous and don't read it. And uh, I never saw Baby Blue until recently even, but uh, I got clean on the fifth edition. But I know when I read the Baby Blue, it spoke to me a lot more uh, than the, the Baby, than the, the fifth edition had. But I, I took a... Like you, I took a, a, I had about 30 books with me. I went to visit a friend in Utah, and he wanted a baby blue. And I won't say which area it was, but it was right before this. I, I think their uh, area service committee was meeting at Denny's, and uh, it was right before that, and, and everybody showed up, and I thought, oh, shit, it's going to hit the fan now. About half of them are going to be for it, and half of them are going to be against it. And every single one of them wanted a baby blue, and I don't know. I don't know if I walked out of there with any. <laughs> it was it was a similar experience. I you know I I thought there was going to be contention and everybody wanted one, and uh, and I think a lot of it has to do with the way World Services is, is operating and going. People are starting to be more open minded. But uh, I wanted to thank you for your time and your service and to this fellowship. Is there anything else you'd like to say on a? Yeah, we got away from some things in the fellowship. <coughs> What's? <coughs> Take your time. <clears throat> we got away from something. What's going on with the knob and all that? And we lost the fellowship. They stole it from us. It's become a business. And we're not a fellowship. And uh, that saddens me. I'm angry about that. And uh, uh, I'm not up on all the ins and outs. My focus wasn't on that part of it. It was just about... Uh, Unity, narcotic anonymous, and the exciting times back then. We got a book and uh, all the political stuff going on uh, with the uh, world now, and all. Uh, uh, you know that don't sit well with me. I, I actually have a question. I was wondering earlier when you were talking about because I, I've always held my my experience in this in this current baby blue era has been. And I, that my personal experience has been there's never been any controversy until the world board or NAS puts out a memo and tells the groups that there needs to be a controversy about this baby blue. Usually, if a group hasn't heard about it, they're like, oh, cool, one of our old baby or basic texts, the third edition or the second edition with the revised headers, and we can give it free to newcomers, and they're pretty excited. And it seems like nobody has a problem until they get a, a, a memo from NAS. Back when you had the opinion of the baby blue that you had... Did, was that something that you had an opinion you'd come to you had come to on your own, or had you been told by the office that it was a dangerous I thing? Or had a, from the office and all back then, a group of people and baby blue pop up, and I was upset. You know, uh, fuck, I'm, we we just glad to get a book and mm-hmm. all this baby blue stuff and uh, trying to create this unity within a fellowship, but you know that that upset me and. Uh, and uh, I'm not uh, real versed on all the stuff to talk about here, uh, and I'm learning a lot. You know, uh, all I know is I'm an addict and I love narcotic anonymous, and uh, you know, the excitement we had uh, in uh, 1983, 82, 83, when we got our first basic text, you know, uh, and uh, it was an exciting time back then. and. Uh, we lost a lot of that uh, from world control and all that. There's some of the things that are being talked about uh, here. And uh, it's very uh, upsetting. I don't have any answer for it. And, uh, and I'll be 79 uh, this month. And, uh, and my uh, health challenges, uh, I'm just... Not there equipped to get involved in all that anymore. Right. And I, I was only asking because I, I, we like to be fair and accurate on this show. And uh, so, yeah, it's 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 interesting because your your perception at the time, it wasn't anything you were told by World. And, again, I want to point out to people who are listening, we're being fair and accurate here. You weren't told by World that this should be a contentious issue. You That was something that your, your perception was that the people putting out the baby blue were the ones trying to cause the dissension is the way you no, felt I at really the time. Know who was doing it, you know. You just thought, saw it as a threat to your book. 
So it's a threat to narcotic anonymous. What, what are you people trying to do? So, so there was a legitimate part of the fellowship at this time that wasn't instructed by the office that had that knee-jerk reaction totally uh, well, that organically. Was that was my reaction, you know, with people, we get a book and things are, are real good. We're excited, you know, narcotic mm -hmm. anonymous is growing. And, it's spontaneous, and then all of a sudden this baby blue come up, and I thought about it. You know, I thought it. I don't want this shit in Texas, you know. But Were you aware of the changes that had been made to the 4th and 5th edition at the no. time? You, you weren't aware of those? No, I wasn't paying attention. Like I said, my main yeah. focus was, you know, uh, unity in, uh, in Texas, you know. Te right. Texas is a big state. Oh, yeah, yeah, the biggest. <laughs> and uh, we, had, we had two uh, regions, and then we... Uh, Dallas and Houston, uh, you know, two big cities and uh, 11 areas that pulled out a Lone Star and left them at six. That's a lot of areas pulling out. Yeah, so. biggest, well, biggest, biggest area, biggest land mass in the in the continental United States and a much bigger so, population than Alaska. Yeah. So. <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, and then, uh, they started having separations, and so right now we got about five regions, and I don't. I don't like, we're all telling us how many regents we can have in a state. It's up to the, it's up to the, it's up to the groups. Yeah, I think a lot of times we get the perception if we have more regions and more areas, we're being disunified and forget the unities about the groups and that the service structures are something that's just a tool and that we can be separated there and, and still be unified, you know, mm -hmm. so to speak. To me, the service conference, world, all that, it's, it's about service committees. Right. The service conferences, not governing. Yeah, they need, to, they need to. Somebody said today they should be providing information, not instruction. You know, World Service Conference, regional service conference, it's a service conference. But some of them, I think, they big shots and they start governing. Hmm. You know, we don't have a governing body. We have service body. That's what was set up. So we along the line, we got lost. That's what we well, I sure thank you for your time, brother, and. Uh, be praying for you with your health and uh thank you for all that you've done for our fellowship and you, over the years love you brother thank you you have been listening to autonomous unity 